Today's episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream is a streaming platform that focuses a lot on documentaries and video essays that range from technology, science, nature, history, and so much more. Personally, I checked out a short video called The Rise and Fall of the T-Rex, which not only is what it sounds like, but it was really informative, and hey, I love dinosaurs, so I really enjoyed it. With well over 2,400 titles to choose from, there are all kinds of content for all kinds of people. It's available worldwide and is available on almost every major smart appliance and app. If you want to sign up today, check out curiositystream.com slash completionist or use promo code completionist. You'll get one month free and hey, it's only $2.99 a month, so it's super affordable. Signing up today helps support the show. Thank you once again to today's sponsor, Curiosity Stream. Blowing up Nazis is a time-honored tradition. Indiana Jones did it, Brad Pitt and his buddies did it in Inglorious Bastards, and... Thanks to the magic of video games, the Wolfenstein series has been all about giving us the opportunities to blast through waves of zombies in the comfort of our own homes for over 30 years. Wolfenstein has seen a number of iterations over the years, but has always stuck to the same core concepts. After all, there's only so much you can do with a Nazi killing FPS, right? Wrong. Instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, Machine Games strapped some automatic weapons to it, gave it the option of either being stealthy or destructive, and then cranked all of those things up to 11. And we'll find out if it did the trick when I complete Wolfenstein, The New Order. Here comes a new challenger! Yeah! Danger! Hey everyone, and welcome back to an all new episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. Today, I'm completing Wolfenstein The New Order, which was actually the first Wolfenstein game I've ever played. Something that immediately struck me as being awesome about it is that there are actually two distinct ways to play the game, as well as two unique timelines. Because you never know what path your choices might take you down. For instance, in this timeline, I fired Ted. What? And in this timeline, I fired Bradley. How did I get... Wait, what? He a punk ass bitch. Wolfenstein The New Order is the seventh game in Wolfenstein's main series. And they didn't slow down afterwards either. Machine Games followed up with The New Colossus a couple of years later. And then Wolfenstein Youngblood after that. So while there were a lot of games in the series before this, and while there are likely will continue to be new Wolfenstein reboots until we're all dead and gone, the new order served as the beginning of this latest iteration, which means it had to stand on its own and introduce new people like me to the series while honoring everything that came before it. So the new order rose to the challenge by giving players more of everything that had been missing from previous installments. Initially, more similar to something like Doom, the new order is where the Wolfenstein series really started to differentiate itself with a neat split timeline structure and much more emphasis on story and character. Just like the other Wolfenstein games, the New Order puts you in the shoes of B.J. Blazkowicz, an American soldier fighting against the Nazi menace in an alternate history version of World War II. After thwarting various supernatural schemes in the previous games, the Nazis have started to gain the upper hand. This prompts B.J. and his crew to stage a raid against a fortress run by Death's Head and even more evil than you'd expect Nazi general, because you don't get the nickname Death's Head by being a chill dude. But things go south, one of BJ's pals gets killed, and BJ himself takes some shrapnel to the head, which lands him in a mental institution for 14 years, during which time the Nazis win the war in the traditional way that people win wars, by using robots. When he finally snaps too, BJ has joined up with the resistance and a brave nurse from a mental hospital to end the Nazis' reign of robo-terror once and for all. But how BJ does that is up to the player. Knives are an integral part of the game if you want to be a stealth menace and slit throats from the shadows, or chuck blades into Nazi scouts from across the room. Or, in true US military fashion, you can charge in guns a blazing, blowing away wave after wave of robots, Nazis, and robot Nazis. Most of the shooting mechanics will be familiar to anyone who plays lots of first person shooters, but there's also a cover system and the ability to dual wield, because sometimes one gun just isn't enough. 
no matter how big it is. There's also an upgradable laser tool because everyone loves lasers and a perk system that adds just a dash of RPG elements. It works out that there are multiple ways to play the new order because I'm gonna have to play through both of its timelines and one of them on Uber difficulty. I don't know how hard that will be, but I know that Uber is a pretty scary word, especially when the Nazis are involved. Okay, there it was again. What the hell's going on? There are many video games, especially from the last couple decades, that put a major emphasis on choice. But the New Order isn't one of those games that gives you millions of options on how to play. No, it gives you two options. And you know what? It somehow makes those two options feel like a lot. During the game's prologue, Death's Head gives the player a choice. He's going to kill one of your buddies, and it's either going to be a Scottish pilot named Fergus or the fresh-faced Wyatt. And depending on which choice you make, the story will change, as will some of your abilities. If you save Fergus, you can hotwire electrical boxes and you'll find health upgrades throughout the game. But if you save Wyatt, you can pick locks and you'll find armor upgrades instead. There are also some supporting characters that will only pop up in one timeline or the other. Are those differences really huge? Not particularly but it's enough to feel like a separate story experience, which is good because I had to play through the campaign twice. The first time I saved Fergus and played on the Uber difficulty, so I saved Wyatt when I went through it again. And if the game's options only extended to story differences, it might not be worth playing twice. But Wolfenstein The New Order also gives you two major options when it comes to how you play the game. Are you going to focus on firepower and blast your way through the game's various Nazi bases, including one that's on the frickin' moon? Or are you gonna sneak around like a moon ninja, slicing Achilles tendons and chucking blades right into evil Nazi faces? Again, two isn't a big number, and this game isn't a game that allows you to choose from a bunch of classes for a totally unique gameplay experience each time. In fact, you can change up your approach from level to level if you want, going full tilt on one level and then quietly infiltrating on the next. Everyone deserves the right to let their mood dictate how they're going to murder Nazis on any given day. But there are incentives to working on one approach or the other, specifically with the game's perk system. The more cool stuff you do, the cooler stuff you can do next time. For instance, if you kill enough people with throwing knives, you can hold more throwing knives. Or if you kill two dudes with one grenade, you can now catch grenades and throw them back. It's pretty neat. This rewards picking one playstyle or the other, and that's good because a huge chunk of the game's achievements come from getting all of the perks, which was a piece of cake across both my playthroughs. I got most of the stealth and knife perks on my first run because I was playing on uber difficulty, and it was honestly pretty dang hard. So I stuck with stealth that time and stabbed as many dudes as I could before getting forced into a firefight, and those moments were intense. I can't tell you how many times I scraped through by the skin of my teeth, which is a phrase I've never liked using because the thought of tooth skin makes my jaw and face feel weird. But that tension created a really distinct experience for my first playthrough, so I could do the exact opposite the next time around. I already saved Fergus and played on Uber and done all the stealth perks, so for my second playthrough, I wanted to be a magnificent murder god. I played on a lower difficulty, saved Wyatt this time, and focused on unleashing a torrential downpour of bullets, grenades, and lasers upon the Nazi troops. This run was way less suspenseful, but way more cathartic. I was just running around with two giant guns, messing with Nazis for fun. The upgrades from the previous run carried over, so my laser tool was now a devastating weapon, and I was able to check most of the rest of the achievements off of my list. A lot of them were story related, and then I was able to finish up the rest of the perks. So yeah, two isn't a big number, but Wolfenstein The New Order makes two options feel like a gift. Two separate timelines with some story differences. Two wildly different ways to play the game, even from moment to moment. And two giant guns that you can fire at the same time, because sometimes two is more than enough. I've only got so many hands. So if a game is gonna make you play it twice to complete it, you want to be able to have a unique experience each time. Because it's not always about giving the player a lot of choices. Sometimes one or two is enough if you can make it feel like the choice has consequences and really matters. And in Wolfenstein The New Order, it definitely does. Okay, that's enough of that. Just put it up properly so people can read it. Okay, thank you.
So if you're wondering what the deal is with all these supplemental messages, the New Order starts its campaign with a similarly quick message that says, GET PSYCHED! In a card that's gone so quickly you barely have time to read it. But it's an appropriate command to throw at the beginning of the game, because you should get psyched before playing the New Order. And if that message doesn't do the trick, the first mission definitely will. From the very beginning, it's clear that this game has pushed its FPS elements to the max. You want frenetic, horror-tinged FPS mayhem? Yeah, you've come to the right place for that, and you'll get plenty of it in the oversized prologue. But the New Order doesn't just crank up the intensity of its gameplay or even just the size of its guns. It cranks up everything. And that even includes the story, which goes out of its way to make BJ feel like a well-rounded character for the first time in Wolfenstein history. There's nothing wrong with the pure adrenaline rush of something like Doom, but the New Order wants to give you all of that and more. BJ is a really likable character in this game, rather than the blank slate soldier archetype that he is in previous Wolfensteins. Because this is a Wolfenstein game that doesn't do anything half-assed. It's full-assed all the way, my dudes. You want to play as a heroic all-American soldier archetype? Well, how about a character who takes that to such an extreme he circles back around to being an interesting character? You want to play as someone sneaky and stabby? Well, good news, once you get the perks, you can play as the sneakiest, stabbiest dude of all time. You'll sneak everywhere and stab everything. And if you want to run into combat guns ablazing, then here are some big old guns to do that with. And it wouldn't be in the spirit of the game to just use one gun. So of course, you're usually going to be firing two guns at a time. The New Order takes tried and true FPS tropes and amplifies them until they feel fresh again. The sci-fi elements like the Nazi robots and ancient weaponry are super pulpy and fun. And the Nazi threat is even huger than the actual Nazis, because these ones have successfully taken over the entire freaking world. It makes the story feel massive, because it's just you and a small resistance against pretty much everyone else alive. And while the game can sometimes fall prey graphically to the kind of muddy brown gray look that a lot of shooters have, it definitely makes all of the missions and locations feel really large scale and cinematic. There are even plenty of things to collect without the game ever tipping over into a dull collectathon. There are gold artifacts, which are mostly for looking pretty, letters containing little bits of additional lore, and the aforementioned health and armor upgrades, depending on which timeline you choose. Now, the most exciting collectible, however, is the bits of Enigma code hidden throughout each level. What's neat about these is that they don't do anything at all on their own, but if you can solve all of the puzzles of how to decode them, you can enter the complete codes to unlock some wild new game modes, like 999 mode, which gives you an insane amount of health and ammo. So even with the pretty straightforward collectible, New Order throws a puzzle on top of it, just to make sure you really feel like you've earned your prize. Each individual thing in Wolfenstein The New Order is something that you've probably already seen in many other first-person shooters, but it commits so hard to all of its choices that it's all way more exciting and fun than it sounds on paper. So, whether you're going to be the most gun shootingest gun shooter that ever shot a gun, or Chuck Blades like your renowned action hero Chuck Blades, New Order makes sure you feel like the most coolest, badass possible version of that thing. Because really, what's the point of blowing up Nazi robots if you're not going to do it with style, and in a story that has real characters and emotion? I mean, saving the world, I guess. That's kind of sort of a big deal here, but mostly the other stuff. Yeah, I am even more psyched. And you know why? Because we're gonna talk about one of my favorite things, rewards. Only one of the game's several collectibles nets you any tangible reward for your effort, but it's a big one, four extra game modes. It would have been nice to have a little more incentive to get the letters and golden objects, but it's great that there's such a hefty prize for completing all of the Enigma codes. Which, if a game is gonna make you crack codes that you find, it better make it worth it. And these new modes mostly are. The first code gets you 999 mode, which is a blast. You start with 999 health and unlimited ammo on uber difficulty, and this is the mode you want if you're looking for non-stop mayhem. Cause you can just recklessly throw yourself into battle over and over again. I completed the game again in 999 mode to see if it would get me anything else, which it didn't, but it still ended up being way super fun. 
The next code gets you a mode called a walk in the park, which removes your HUD completely so you have no idea what your health or ammo situation is like. And honestly, it's kind of neat. Probably not worth another entire playthrough of the game, but good for a little bit of extra variety. Code number three gets you hardcore mode, which is just the game on Uber difficulty, but with all of the health and armor pickups removed. It's a little harder, sure, but doesn't really feel like its own separate mode. And if harder is really what you're looking for, you're probably gonna skip right over hardcore mode for Iron Man mode, which you get for completing the fourth and final Enigma code. Iron Man mode once again sets the difficulty to Uber, but only gives you one life. If you get a game over, you have to start over. And while stuff like that is usually catnip for me, there's no reward and it doesn't do anything for your completion percentage. And while I do love a good challenge, I didn't want to ruin a good thing by throwing myself at Iron Man mode until I ended up hating a game that I love. Life's too short, man. Apart from the four game modes and some random tidbits like concept art and character bios, there's only one other big surprise hiding in the game, and that's the nightmare. The nightmare can be found at a bunk in the resistance bunker and is just the first level from 1992's Wolfenstein 3D at whatever difficulty level you were playing the main game at. And that's pretty dope. Not essential by any means, but definitely a fun Easter egg. And you know I beat the dang nightmare because I call myself the completionist, not the completion-ish. All right, that sounded way better in my head. But either way, this game freaking rules. Because it was my first Wolfenstein game, I didn't have the other installments to compare it to, but it made a fan out of me almost immediately. It's big, loud, and over the top but also takes a thoughtful approach to its story and its stealth elements. There was plenty in here to make it worth playing through three times, and each of those first two playthroughs presented two totally different but equally compelling versions of the game. So while this is a series that had largely passed me by, The New Order did what a reboot is supposed to do and hooked me. I'm a Wolfenstein guy now, and I'm proud of it. While I completed Wolfenstein The New Order, there were, 111 deaths, roughly 2,500 Nazis killed, 72 scraps of Enigma code used to unlock four new game modes, 35 hours of total playtime, and two separate timelines, because consequences are a real thing. This game is a blast. It's a great FPS, a great installment for the Wolfenstein franchise, and a great reminder that your choices have an effect on the world around you, which is why in this timeline, I decided to do the right thing and rehire Ted. Thank you, thank you so much. And that's why in this timeline, I decided to rehire Bradley. Thanks, man. Frazier, what the hell? You're supposed to be Bradley. What do you mean? I am Bradley. Kids, don't mess with timelines. Timelines are confusing, but more importantly, do mess with Wolfenstein The New Order because it rules. It's big and bombastic, but it has an actual story and a shocking amount of gameplay variety as well. So with that in mind, guys, I give this game my completionist rating of completed. This Yoshi thing is weird. That's all the time we have today, guys. So please, as always, let me know what you about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you like the show, hit that like button. Smash the subscribe button for new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays. I've been Gerard the Completionist. This apparently is Bradley. I'm eating, Bradley. He's eating Oreos. You want Oreo? I don't. You're getting it all over my new shirt. And we'll see you next week for another brand new episode. Bye.